Ranking on Google. That's the age old question. How do you rank on Google? How do you get to number one? How do you get to the top of the first page? Yeah, we all heard that question, but really, what does it take to get on the first page? Well, today I'll be explaining to you the real factors that will come into play when you want to rank a page on Google. These are not the only factors, but they are the factors which if you work on, you will be able to rank. Now, that depends on your industry, of course. If you tell me you're going into the, the shoe industry, for example, it might be harder than if you're going into a, a more niche industry, like for example, a roofing or a plumbing or something like that. So the, the more this industry has people working on SEO in their company, well, the more it's gonna be tough to get on the page one. But that's why you need to analyze your competitors first. So first thing you do is you analyze your competitors, you check what they're posting, what type of, of articles or what type of pages they have going on on the first page. Then you check for the keyword, well, you should have your keyword already. You check, check for the keyword in the competitors' pages. See how many times they use them. See whether if they're using them or not. Try to spot features. Features are basically uh, keywords in the right places. So if you see, oh, they're not placing the keywords in the in the header, then you have an opportunity there. You have a feature that you can take advantage of. There are also things like images, charts, uh, lists, bullet points. Uh, the list goes on. I mean, there's uh, you can use videos. That's the most powerful thing you can use. All of these things give you points towards Google's ranking factors. So let's get started. Ranking means being in a certain position in the SERPs. SERPs meaning the search engine results page. So I'll go over the factors that are very important and we'll go down that list together. So first, there are backlinks. These are links that are pointing to your website, but are coming from another website. For example, you have a sports business in the, in the sports industry and you're linking to an article that talks about protein shake. That protein shake article has, uh, it's a company that makes protein shakes. They have a backlink from you. They're pointing a, a site from their website to your website. So if, for example, on my website, I have a link from, for example, another company, then that would be a backlink, and but it'd be a backlink for them. So you want to have a link on someone else's website that's linking to you. And when that happens, well, that's called a backlink. Now, how you get backlinks is done in multiple approaches. You can either find people online and ask them to, to link to you by offering them something they might need. Uh, sometimes it might be money. Sometimes it might be, for example, uh, an article. It might be a lot of different things. So you want to make sure that you contact a lot of people and that you, you get the best links possible. But that's a very difficult process. And there's also ways to pay companies to actually get links from you. So they're working with a lot of companies and they might be like, okay, you have a, a sports business? Okay, well, we have, we're working with a few companies that deal in sports too. We might be able to, to work together. Now these cost quite a fair amount and I wouldn't suggest you start doing that right in the beginning. Cause there are a lot of other things you can work on that are easier to do than getting backlinks. Backlinks is very important, but I would suggest you do that a little bit afterwards unless you're a professional and you know how to manage a campaign from a to z and then from that point you should already have your plan for backlinks next is on page optimization optimizing your page with the proper keywords you found after doing your keyword research that's a very important step in seo the place of the keywords on the page and the number of times as well so it's not just where you place them and it's not how many times you place them if you place them too many times then that's, that's bad. Stuffing the page with a bunch of keywords is not recommended and placing the same keywords multiple times isn't either. Each page should target only one keyword. You shouldn't be targeting a bunch of keywords with one page. In time, once you start ranking for your main keyword, then you'll probably get other keywords to start ranking for the page as well. And that'll come naturally. At some point, when you find very good keywords, you might wanna switch, but that's a that's a choice i mean you shouldn't touch it in the beginning you should leave it run for a few months and see what it comes see the fruits that it'll bring so if you place too many keywords on a page that's affecting your keyword density your keyword density is the number of times your keyword is on a page uh, compared to the number of words on the page so you should do something roughly about one to two percent that's about five keywords per 500 words you shouldn't go more than that. That'll just be the keyword stuffing and Google penalizes sites that do that. Internal linking. Making sure that each page has a link to different pages to your site. Yes, you have your menu with all the links on top, but that's not enough. You need other links inside your page that are linking to other pages. For example, if you read an article on the benefits of honey, then you'll want to link to another page where you talk also about honey or the benefits of honey. This can be done in many different ways, but I'll show you an example right now. So I have an article called benefits of honey. 
And I have another article called Three Best Foods to Use Honey In. For example, in the intro or anywhere in the, in the article, I could mention something like, oh, and by the way, check out where you can use honey and get these benefits in this article. And then you link to that other article, which is where to use honey, three things to use honey in. And so that's how you use internal links. For an article that's about 500 words, you want to keep it to about two internal links, maybe three, but that's a lot. Once you get, for example, a thousand word article, you might want to put three internal links. You have 2000 words, you might want to do something like three, four, maybe five, maybe even six. You get the point, you shouldn't go overboard and you shouldn't uh, do just one or two if you have a big article. Now, external linking, the same as internal linking, but instead of linking to internal pages, you'll be linking to pages from other sites, like resources that might uh, you might have mentioned in your article or in your page. It's good to link to high authority pages, like websites that are very known, like news channels maybe, or, or something that where a lot of people go to. Next is search intent, probably one of the most important things to not let go. When choosing a keyword, you absolutely must make sure that you're actually satisfying the search intent. For example, Someone searches for Elgato webcam versus Logitech Brio webcam. So they're trying to look for a comparison. The search intent here is clear. It's a comparison search intent. Users want to find the best webcam out of the two. So the best content that would satisfy this intent will be a review of both webcams, not a product sales page. Even if you do sell both of these webcams in your shop, then you might want to do a review. And then from there, you would link to the other product page. This way you're giving the customer his answer. And when you direct them to the other page, to the, to the product page, because once his mind is made up, that's when the intent will change to a purchase intent. So I'll make a list of the search intents that are the most used. Regularly, there are about four, but you can go to six as well. The first one is a navigational, which is not our brand. So that means someone is searching, for example, for a subway login page. So if they're looking for the Subway login page, what does that tell you? That means they're looking for the page to log in in Subway. But if, for example, McDonald's appears, that means McDonald's is ranking for Subway's navigational keyword, which is very strong. That's a very good move, but it's hard to do as well. The second one is navigational, which is our brand. So that means that the person is looking for, for example, the Subway login and they find Subway login. Then in that case, it's it's that's a keyword that we have and it's our brand so it's not it's not really uh, strong because it's normal you should be ranking for your own page that's one of the first things you need to make sure of. if a competitor is ranking on your keyword that's a bad sign next is the informational intent informational intent is when someone is looking for information on something they're scouring the internet to find an answer they're looking for something they're looking for for information they want to they want to consume information blog posts will be informational intent driven most of the times then we have comparison intent comparison intent is when you're comparing two different products so the customer is already lower on the funnel they're already decided by the products they know which products about they want but they're not sure so they're looking for a comparison between two products next is the investigative intent i should have said that one before because it actually goes before that one well, there's not really an order, but if you want to talk about funnel steps, then it would be informational, investigative, comparison, and then transaction. These are the four steps that go into a funnel. Then you have navigational, which is when people already know you, but we'll keep going with the list. So the comparison intent, like I said, was to compare items. Investigative is when they're actually looking for what to compare. They don't know yet what brand they want to choose or what exact product they know they they want a product. They already know their, their solution to the problem, but they don't know yet what they want to buy as in the product. And then you have transaction intent. That's at the bottom of the funnel when customer is ready to buy and they need to be shown a sales page, a product page, something where they can buy something because they know what they want. For example, buy Nike shoes or buy McDonald burger or something like that. Okay, another ranking factor that's easy to do is image optimization. It doesn't hold too much weight, but it's, it's very easy to do and you should take a habit of doing it. Images need to be light as possible, meaning that if you want to use an image that's well, 500 by 500 pixel on the website. So it looks like half of the page, something like that. But the original image is 2000 by 2000 pixels. You don't want to enter it like that. You want to enter it with the right pixels that that's needed. So you want to bring it into Canva and then into Canva, you resize it or bring it anywhere, so any software you, you use and you resize it to 500 by 500 and then you upload it. But 
hold up you shouldn't really upload it right away once you've resized it what you can do to increase the seo optimization is to compress the image as well when you do these things it won't slow down your website as much especially if you use a lot of images in your site then you want to make sure that you you use also the feature called lazy loading which is in a lot of different cms's usually they have a checkbox or or sometimes they use it automatically i'll leave a link below to the website where you can compress your images you can use the image resizer in canva or you can always also use the one in power toys which i made a software review of about a week ago so check out the description and you can also see the video somewhere here but power toys is much more than just an image resizer it's just one of the tools it has I suggest this strongly. So next we have page load speed. This is the amount of time your site takes to load up and to have all of the images ready and all of its features up and going. You want to go to GT metrics or Google page speed insight and you want to plug in your website there and it'll give you not 100% accurate answer, but it'll give you scores on many different things. Your page load speed is affected by, for example, your images. If you have high quality images or if you don't resize them, if you don't change the resolution, uh, there's a lot of things that affect uh, a page load speed. There's a lot of technical stuff, but some things you can easily change. Next is mobile friendliness. Now, I won't go into details for that. You all know that your website should be fully responsive in 2022, and that's, uh, that's just a fact. <laughs> your URL slugs. So the end of your URL should always be a keyword. That's tough to do because it's difficult to have an URL that's shaped exactly for your page. So for example, you have a, a page that's called best honey benefits for 2022 to use in your meals. Well, you're not going to plug that into your URL, but you might want to use just the seed keyword, like for example, honey benefits or something like that. It's not a must and you shouldn't do it if it's going to make it weird. Remember, client is first. It's not about optimizing for SEO first, uh, for Google first. It's about optimizing for the client or for the user and then for the search engine. Remember, if it looks weird, don't do it. You should optimize for the users first, not for the search engine. First, you think about what the user is going to see and if it looks good for them, and then you optimize it better for the search engine to understand that. CTR. That's the number of times a page is clicked and that's shown as a percentage. So the number of times of the people come to your website is the number of times that they've clicked through it. But it's not the number of times they've seen your page in Google. So seeing your page is a view. Clicking the page is a click. And the CTR is a percentage of the clicks compared to the number of views. If you want to make a story with your data, then I'll show you what CTR means in story mode. If, for example, a thousand people see your website, but only two people actually go through it, that means they click through it. What does that tell you? Well, it tells you that they're not really interested because there's only two people that found it interesting. So you need to change something. Changing your title tags is a very good way to, to test CTR. You can do A-B tests or you can just change it after one month or two months uh, and see what the results give you. But it's, it's very important to know that once you have a lot of views, that's good. But if people aren't clicking through, you're just missing a little thing to change. And now we have bounce rate. When a person clicks on your website and they're finally there, if they don't really find any interesting answer to their questions or they're not finding what they're looking for, that means they're going to leave. And when they leave without doing anything on your site, that affects your bounce rate. So when a person lands on your page and does not click anything, they don't perform any other action, then they leave the page. That's considered as a bounce for Google. And it tells them that people have not found what they were looking for. This is bad for your ranking because Google will only push you if they see that people have an interest in your page once they land on it. So if you have a bad bounce rate, Google will start putting you down. SSL certificate. If your site shows HTTP in the address bar, that's a bad signal for Google. That means the site is not secure. You should have HTTPS. If, you're, if you do have an SSL certificate, if you do have an HTTPS in the address bar, which is usually provided by, by the, the hosting company, well, you should redirect your HTTP to the HTTPS version of your site. That way, if someone clicks on or they write HTTP, they'll still, they'll still get sent to the HTTPS version. And browsers nowadays, they often block HTTP versions of websites, so be careful with that. Now, there are hundreds more ranking factors, but some carry more weight than others. That's why you should always create an action plan when conducting an SEO campaign. If you don't, 
you'll surely be overwhelmed and disorganized and are likely to get miserable and even no results at all. I hope you guys found this interesting. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of video. I'll do some more SEO videos soon. I'm coming out with the DM mini series, uh, digital marketing mini series, and also have a Notion series for marketers uh, series coming soon. All right, take care guys, have a good day.